So welcome really to this latest video on 162 Maths and in this video we'll be continuing with the theme of going through some GCSE Maths higher big mark questions taken from some past papers. Now as always there'll be a copy of the question paper for you to download and have an attempt at before watching this video and go through the answers and I'll also include the mark scheme as there are going to be more than one way of getting the correct answer. Now in terms of looking at the topic descriptors of each of these questions, you can see that they are not fixated purely on one topic. So do expect these big mark questions to kind of amalgamate a lots of different maths topics together and it really does encourage you to think laterally. So looking at question one, uh, you can see that one involves trigonometry, expressions and equations. Question two is equation for circle, circle theorems, gradients, equation of a line, simultaneous equations. So a lot of topics there, but obviously you can see there that it's six marks. Question three is exclusive to trigonometry. Question four is related to bounds and percentages, which are quite a common pairing there. And question five is trigonometry and area. Now you can see I've tried to differentiate which questions appeared on a non-calculator and which appeared on a calculator paper. So let's get started looking at question one. So let me just zoom in there. So it says question one says the diagram shows a triangle ABE and a rectangle BCDE. And it says the area of ABE is equal to the area of BCDE and BC is two centimeters shorter than BE. The question is asking us to work out the length of BE. Now, if you've not had opportunity to print off this question, then all you need to do is just simply pause the video and then unpause once you've had an attempt. So getting started on this particular question, let's have a look at looking at this. So we're wanting to work out the length of BE. So it's always important to establish which length that you're wanting to work out. So we're wanting to work out the length of this. Now it says using the first bit of information, that's always usually the indication of what to start off first. So it says the area of ABE, so the triangle is equal to the area of the rectangle. So taking this statement here, the area of the triangle is equal to the area of the rectangle. So uh, let me just get rid of that off. So then from this, and it then says in the next statement that BC is two centimeters shorter than BE. So looking at this, if we labeled BEX, then this length is going to be two centimeters shorter. So that's going to have a length of X minus two. So that means that the area of the rectangle is going to be base times the height. So it's going to be X multiplied by X minus two. Now from this, we then need to work out the area of the triangle. Now the area of the triangle, using the bits of information that we've been given, I'm going to use a half AB sine C. And the reason why I'm using this is because I don't know the height of that triangle. So here A is going to be X, B is going to be 10, and capital C is going to be 30. So here I've got half times X times 10 times sine 30 which is an exact value of trig and is going to be equal to a half. So what we've got then is we've got a half times x times 10 times a half. Then combining all of these things together, I'm going to end up with 10x over 4 and there, and I can simplify that as 5x over 2. So from this, what I can then establish that 5x, that's over 2, is going to be equal to the area of the rectangle, which is x, x minus 2. So from this, what we can then do is then go on to solve this equation. So if I expand the brackets, I get 5x over 2 equals x squared minus 2x. Then take the 2 over, so I end up with 5x equals 2x squared minus 4x. I can then take uh, the 5x over to this side, in which I'll move over to the side here, in which then I end up with 2x squared minus 9x equals 0. And then from this, what I can then do is then factorise it. So here I'm going to got x as a common factor, and then I've got 2x minus 9 equals 0. So either x can equal 0 or 2x minus 9 equals 0. Now x can't be 0 because its length 
we can't have a, a zero length so it must be solving this equation in which here I get 2x equals 9 so x equals 4.5 centimeters and there is my final answer moving on to question two it says that a and b are points on the circle with equations of x squared plus y squared equals 25 now again if you're not a chance to put this question i'll just pause the video and you can have an attempt at it it says a is at three four b is a point on the y-axis p a equals p b are tangents and the first part is asking us to show that the coordinates of b is zero minus five so looking at the equation of the circle which is here and it's x squared plus y squared equals 25 we know that the radius is going to equal the square root of 25 so therefore r equals 5. so therefore this distance here is going to be 5 so this point here is going to be 5 or note 0 5 rather And this is going to be below the axis, so that point there is going to be 0, minus 5. And there we go. So here, see if I just write 0, minus 5 equals minus 5. So B is at 0, minus 5. Something along those lines would be fine for the single mark. The next question says, give a reason why PA is equal to PB. So in other words, why this line here is the same as this line here now this is a circle theorem and basically you need to state something along the lines of that tangents from an external point are equal in length something along those lines would be absolutely fine Moving on to the main bulk of the question, it says P is the point AB and it says work out the values of AB. Now for this, I'm going to use the diagram to make it easier, but I'm going to have to get rid of all of this so you can see it all on the screen. So looking at this, and let's just get rid of the colouring so there's no distractions there. So what we need to do is we need to work out the point P. Now P is the intersection point of line so P is the intersection point of AP and BP. Now intersection point, whenever you see that word, it's always going to mean simultaneous equations when it comes to algebra. So first thing I need to do is I need to work out the equation of a p then i need to make the find the equation of o uh, b p and then step three is then use simultaneous equations to find p so they're the three steps that i'm going to do so Looking at this, the first thing I need to do is I need to work out the gradient of that point. Now here, this line here is the radius, and one of the circle theorems is that the radius meets the tangent at 90 degrees. So if I look at the gradient of that orange line, let me just get rid of that little square there, that that, looking at using the coordinates of A, that's going to be a distance of 3, and that's going to be a distance of 4. So here the gradient of OA is going to be 4 over 3 so therefore the gradient of AP is going to be the negative reciprocal of that now we do that's going to change the sign and then we flip the fraction so it's going to be minus 3 over 4 now a coordinate that it lines through is going to be 3 4 so then to find the equation up line this is going to be my M this is going to be my x1, this is going to be my y1, and the equation I'm going to use of a straight line is going to be y minus y1 and x minus x1. So substituting those numbers in, what do I get? Well, I'm going to get y minus 4 equals minus 3 over 4 x minus 3. Expanding the brackets out, I get y minus 4 equals minus 3 quarters of x and then it's going to be plus and it's going to be 9 over 4. 
then if I take the 4 over, then what I end up with is y equals minus 3 over 4x plus 9 over 4 plus 4. And at this stage, what I then want to do is I want to change this because I need to join these two things together. So what that then becomes is 9 over 4 plus 16 over 4, which becomes 25 over 4. So what I can do is scribble that out and change that for 25 over 4. So that's the equation of AP. The next equation I then need to work out is the line PB, which is a horizontal line going through B. So that's going to be Y equals minus 5. So in using simultaneous equations, I've got y equals minus 5, and I've got y equals minus 3 over 4x plus 25 over 4. And then as they both equal y, I can make both equations equal to each other. So I've got minus 5 equals minus 3 over 4x plus 25 over 4. Now with this, I'm going to multiply everything on the right left hand side by 4 so I get rid of the fractions so that becomes minus 20 equals minus 3x plus 25 so minus 45 equals minus 3x so x equals positive 15 so therefore the coordinates of p is going to be 15 minus 5 there we go let me just stick a little sign there oh and write that a little bit clearer so it's minus five and there we go moving on to question three it says the diagram shows a vertical tower cd of height h meters it says abc is horizontal ab is 40 meters work out the height of h so the first thing we need to do with this is think to ourselves right okay well I can see H is part of a right angle triangle, but I can't use Sokotoa trig because I don't know what any of the lengths, I don't know what the line DB is or BC is, so I can't use Sokotoa trig. So what I need to do is I need to find one of the other lengths for that triangle. So first, what I can work out is I can work out what this angle here is. Now, angles on a straight line add up to 180. So this angle here is going to give me an answer of 148 and I've got that by doing 180 take away 32. Now angles on a triangle add up to 180 so this angle here is going to be 180 minus 26 minus 148 and it gives me an answer of 6 degrees so that's there is 6. Then using the cosine rule I can then work out what this if I just call that length x so this line here is x so using the sine rule what I've got is I've got opposite angles and uh, the length is going to be 40 over sine 6 is going to be equal to x over sine 26 then I cross multiply so I've got x sine 6 equals 40 sine 26 so x equals 40 sine 26 over sine 6 and if I type that into my calculator I get an answer of 167.75187 and I believe it is 66. You may get a longer answer, you may get a shorter answer. So this answer here, this number here is 167.75187. Now I've worked that length out, I can now use trig, Sokotoa trig, to work out what h is. So here, this angle here is 32, that is 167.75. So then, labelling this up, this is the opposite, that's the hypotenuse, so I'm going to use cos. So cos 32 equals uh, h over 167. Now, a lot of students will probably get... A little bit stumped by using h because h you usually tend to use the hypotenuse doesn't matter call that another letter if it makes it easier for you so let's just call that y and i've got eight seven six six so h equals one six seven point seven five blah 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 times cos of 32 and i get h value of 88.9 meters and that's to one decimal place 
Moving on to question four, it says that an empty container has a capacity of 80,000 litres to one significant figure. Mel pours 7,400 litres of water to two significant figures. She says that I filled more than 10% of the container. Is she correct? Now, this is obviously going to be upper and lower bound. So what we need to look at is we need to look at the worst case scenario. Now, the worst case scenario is going to be a smaller container. Oh, I don't know why I put a U there. So a smaller container and a big pour. So looking at the rounding, this has been rounded to one significant figure. So one significant figure in this number is going to be 10,000. So to the nearest 10,000, 10,000 divided by 2 is 5,000. Uh, so then from this, it's going to be 80,000 plus or minus 5,000. So the upper lower limit is going to be 75,000 and 85,000. Then moving on to the poor, well, that's been rounded to two significant figures. And the second significant figure is 100. So 100 divided by 2 is 50. So it's going to be 7, 4, 0, 0. So 7,400 plus or minus 50. So that's going to be 7, 3, 5, 0 and 7, 4, 5, 0. So looking at this, the worst, the smallest container value, well, that's going to be 7,500, uh, 75,000 rather. And the biggest pour is going to be 7,450. So here we've got 7, 4, 5, 0 oh, divided by 7, 5, 0, 0, 0. Multiply that by 100 and I get an answer of 9.93 recurring percent. So as 9.93 recurring percent is less than 10%, has she filled more? No, she is incorrect. Then moving on to our last question, it says in this question, all lengths are in centimeters. The triangle and the trapezium are equal in area. And it says work out an expression of y in terms of x, given that sine theta equals one third. Give your answer in the form of a over b x, y equals a over b x, where a and b are integers. So if we start off like by working out the areas of each of these two shapes. So here the area of a, now for this, I'm going to use a half a, b, sine c. So if I label this side as a, this is b, and that's going to be c. So here I've got a half times 6x times 8y times, and then it says that sine theta is a third. So combining each of those things, and I can just convert them all into fractions in which I get 6 times 8, which is 48. So it's going to be 48xy over 2 times 1 times 1 times 3, which is 6. And then 48 divided by 6 gives me 8. So it's 8xy. And that's one area there. Then working out the area of a trapezium. So this, the area of a tra trapezium, is a plus b times h. So two parallel sides multiplied by the height divided by 2. So that's A, that's B, and that's H, in which then I've got 4x plus 10x multiplied by 3x, all divided by 2. So that becomes 14x times 3x divided by 2. I can cancel that, so that becomes 7, so it becomes 21x. Then from this, what we've then got is we've then got 20, if I make the 2, areas equal to each other, I get 8xy equals 21x. And from that, I can cancel the x's. Oh, that's going to be x squared rather. I've missed out a square. And that should be there. Oh no, there we go. And from this then, what I've got is 8y equals 21x. So y equals 21 over 8 
x and there is my final answer so a equals 21 and b equals 8.